The DS220J is Synology's entry-level two-bay NAS and a great way to get exposure to how NASs, RAID and Synology's user interface work without spending a huge amount of money. Let's start by taking a look at the hardware. The back of the unit features a small number of additional ports. There's two USB-A ports for plugging in USB drives for easy sharing and a single one gigabit ethernet port. Installing hard drives in the unit is easy. You just remove two small screws from the back, then the cover slides forward and lifts up and off. That then exposes the mounting screws and there's two per drive on each side. You can see that the drives are mounted here and there's a space between them so that the fan can blow air around them pretty easily. There's a choice of fan modes in the management software and I set mine to quiet and it is pretty quiet. And in spite of that, the temperature of the drives is well within the manufacturer's recommendations. Power is supplied by this 60 watt power brick, which is entirely sufficient for the machine. The peak power draw I saw was on boot up and that peaked at just below 44 watts. Once the machine had fully booted up, it settled down to about 23 watts continuous usage. Now if you pay about 30 cents a kilowatt hour, which is what I pay, then the total annual cost of running the machine is about $78 a year, which is a reasonably economical amount. To get a better understanding of its performance, it's a good idea to learn where the DS220J sits in comparison to the other two options in Synology's range for two bay NASs and what hardware they have. The DS220J is the cheapest of Synology's two bay NASs at $189 US from Amazon, but that's of course with no hard drives. And for reference, Synology sell two other two bay NASs, and these are the DS223 at $249 and the DS220 Plus at $299. The primary differences in the hardware of these units is that the DS220J has an ARM CPU, four cores running at 1.4 GHz, and only half a gig of memory. The DS223 has an ARM CPU running at 1.7 GHz with four cores and has two gigs of memory. And finally, the DS220 Plus has an Intel CPU and it has two gigs of RAM upgradable to six gigs. In spite of the limited hardware, the 220J is completely capable of saturating the gigabit ethernet interface in both reads and writes. The real limitations come in around things like the number of concurrent connections at 100, the maximum number of defined user accounts at 1024, and if you set the NAS up to receive video from your IP cameras, then it's limited to about three high definition video feeds. None of these things are terribly limiting for a home user, but if you have a specific need in mind, it'd be a good idea to look at the product specification sheet and make sure that it meets your particular need. And if it doesn't, then you just have to move up the product range a little. Really, the biggest limitation is that one gigabit interface. Currently, you could fit two 22 terabyte hard drives and stripe them together for 44 terabytes of capacity. And that means it would take four and a half days to copy off all of the data across that one gigabit interface. And that's something to consider if you ever have a need for urgent access to a large portion of your data. All right, it's time to move on to the single best feature of this NAS and the reason why you buy Synology, and that's the software library. Even though the software range for this NAS is limited compared to other products in Synology's range because of the ARM CPU and limited hardware, it's still enormous. It's hard to come up with a piece of software that you could want that's not here available for download for free at the click of a button. Let's sum it all up with some pros and cons. In the pros column, we've got the fact that it uses barely any power. It's a relatively quiet unit, very quiet. It has that incredible software library I just mentioned. And finally, value. At $189 for a two bay NAS, that's incredibly good value, a great price. And then we move on to the cons column, which are, yes, it has some performance limits. It's fine for anything at home or small office use, but other than that, it, it's just not powerful enough. And then last of all, I've got that gigabit interface that's not upgradable. That's it. If you enjoyed the video, you could actually really help me out by giving me a subscribe. I'd like to try and get to 1000 subscribers and you could help me make it happen. Thank you for watching.